Hello listeners, welcome to Views on Health. Back with us on the program is Dr. Buddhi Jayasekara, consultant psychiatrist, teaching hospital, Kulia Pitya. Welcome back to SLBC and our studios, doctor. And for the information of our listeners, Dr. Buddhi Jayasekara is going to continue on the topic of drug abuse, which was discussed last time around, but going on to uh, focus on its impact on relationships, drug abuse and its impact on relationships. And as we discussed this the last time around, Dr., um, relationships was not taken so much into consideration then, but we do know that drug abuse has impacted tremendously in the negative way on many relationships between families, friends, in workplaces, you name it, everywhere. Over to you to give us your expert opinion. Thank you, Fatima. That was a great insight into what and how it was, like uh, in relate, relation to the relationships. Now, it comes down from your child to the father, mother, and so on, even to your extended family. When someone is abusing, let's take it as adult for the time being. Now, if that adult is using substance, whatever it is, it will have a greater impact on his spouse or especially the children. Because the, how the, the general psychological health of, the, of a normal house, normal home, will be completely disturbed when substance is involved because there will be frequent fights, frequent aggression, uh, loss of uh, financial support as well given to the family, especially at times the, when the children wanted their father or mother to teach them how to do their homework maybe or how to behave in front of other people even. All these skills which the children will be getting from them will be left out or they, they, they won't be getting it. So basically the relationships which the children will have in future to come with, with others, uh, even with, with their own lives as family members or as a, another father or mother role will be disturbed significantly with the substance. More than that, the aggression at times will disturb their secure feeling of security. There is always this unpleasant feeling that whoever might hit me, whoever might abuse me, whoever might scold me. So that free feeling, the, the feeling of having a security related to your life is being disturbed. That is a significant stress on your life, which might ultimately lead into a, in a, another adult, a hypertension, diabetes, and so on. In a child, inattentiveness, where they could not focus, their memory will be uh, less compared to what they've been. And even they might behave as abusers at school towards other children which again we tend to see quite often because there's so much of domestic violence at home that they try to do the same to other kids who are more, more sort of timid and so on. They try to abuse them at school. So the whole structure ultimately, having said that like it was the home, but still it goes into a country even, ultimately when each home is invaded by these substances. Yeah, absolutely, Doctor. It's, it's a very um, pathetic situation, and um, it is something that uh, I, for one, can't see being eradicated from society uh, because it has really got its tentacles into you know, every, the day-to-day -day lives of so many people. And um, also like we have, we know and we have said it before, a thriving trade. Uh, now, um, you spoke of uh, 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 um, father, the head of the household. Uh, if he is abusing, 
or he's into drugs and it impacts on the family. Um, supposing the parents are not abusers, but it's just the children, and which is what we see a lot uh, in our society. Uh, so um, obviously the children, they become, you know, adults and once they get into it, uh, it continues because they cannot get out of it unless they do get out of it. There's a conscious effort, there's treatment, they go for counseling, there's rehabilitation, and they're out of it, uh, which is just something that I would, I would like you to focus on in the course of the program. So now getting back to the, the children who may be the abusers, and as you said the last time around, the parents should be vigilant to see that there are the changes in their behavior so that they sit up and take notice and find out why. And then also when they are when you discuss it, the children may not like it, child or the children. They might be aggressive and say, I'm not doing anything wrong, I'm, you're just imagining it, because they obviously don't want to admit. In your practice, how do you deal with it? As you correctly said and quite rightly, most of the children will initially negate their use of any substance. If you have a sort of a good relationship with the child prior, probably ultimately he might end up confiding with you about what really happened, but not always because substance do its own role within the small brain and uh, it will never uh, allow its habits to be disregarded or uh, discontinued. So it will continuously try to support the uh, habit. So it's not your child who was really bad. It, uh, it's really the different uh, chemical structure of the substance which is making this difficulty. So what happens is initially they'll be very aggressive as you correctly said and at times very uh, very manipulative, if I may say. They might cry, saying that, how can you look at me like that? Ultimately, you are my mother or you are my father, which, which, which ultimately the parents will feel so sad about being suspicious about their child and leave it out. So I have seen few kids who really did that well, bit of good drama and uh, get away, but lately to being found out red-handed. So uh, the issue is however much they feel that they need substances, there is a good part as well. They, are, they, are, they, they feel, know that they are not doing the good thing. So if you talk to them nicely, not in a very aggressive way, probably they will accept that they might might minimize the use. They might say, okay, our one, one big brother, one sister from the school might um, had given me forcefully, I only used once, but may use it as a red flag. It might be as if you want to trust your child. I, I've seen several parents who, who really thought like, okay, this was not my child who had been using, it was forced on him or her. Lately to find out that the child had been using it for quite some time. Because that's the way of the children. They, they try to put the blame on somebody else. So take it, don't try to sort of be very suspicious around them asking, no, no, it, it's only you that who have used and don't use that sort of remarks. Let the child come to you with answers, with, with, with their explanation, their own explanation about how the substance was introduced, how we started using and what is happening now. So then we can try to help them gradually. And the other part is sometimes you tend to see, not very uncommon as well, some sort of abuse by various people because they get into adults or even some adult groups afterwards and they get sexually exploited. Sometimes for the money itself, for the drug use to finance, they had to go into uh, certain sex trades even. 
unfortunately. So you need to be vigilant of that part as well. They might not let you know, but gradually with time, if you explain to them that, okay, there are things like this which is happening, so tell me if there is, so we could do the necessary things. Uh, if there is a bad illness, even we could get the necessary treatment out of it. That that will drive them to tell you certain things if you are very supportive at the end of the day as well. So wouldn't it, it be a good uh, practice from the very uh, inception meaning when the child is just two, three, four years, five years old, uh, to have this uh, confidence building between parents and the child and um, where the child can tell, even from a Montessori school, uh, come and relate what happened so that you know you have that confidence building and there's that uh, communication between parents and ch the child or children and then they will be talking and then in the process the parents obviously can keep advising the children in a very gentle way to begin with and uh, not to take anything that is offered to them by anybody <coughs> except the food that the parents send or the food that the school provides in case of a tiffin or a lunch or a snack or as the case may be, so that uh, to that extent they don't take anything that is given by somebody else, even a friend. Yes, that was excellent suggestion and that's what I do tell them as well, tell the parents, because you have to make sure like with the how the th current affairs are happening, how certain things are being introduced into the kids' world, you have to make sure that you know what is happening, what was given to the child. Yes, number one, as you correctly said, whatever the food, whatever, because uh, uh, there were things like even toffees, even stickers which you put into your mouth, which had been introduced in around certain schools, which children could get as substance. Like it's, it's the substance really which is made into that toffees, drinks and all that as well. So yes, we need to be vigilant. As you correctly said, we need to have that uh, bond. Ultimately, it's your child. Your child needs you and you are the one they are looking up to from the very beginning as a parent. So that bond and that confidence they should have. If they have done something wrong even, they need to have the confidence to tell you so that you might uh, punish them in a different way but at the same time the child will need to have that confidence to accept that I have done something wrong and my mother or father loves me that's why he might be punishing me to get me corrected to save my life save my future so have that discussion ongoing as you correctly said maybe from the preschool even beyond even much earlier well, thank you doctor because uh, we live in a different world today i mean so f lives are so uh, different uh, lifestyles are fast paced and uh, uh, everybody's busy and you find that uh, uh, in in our culture we have had domestic help in the past now we don't so quite often children are left to their own devices when they come home after school uh, there is no adult supervision and the arrangements are made where they are in the house and they're locked inside till the parents come home and uh, parents do monitor they call and they keep in touch and ask how's everything but that that's, it's still remote remote control till they come home and in that time anything can happen a child could have brought something home and uh, consumed it and nobody would know uh, doctor what sort of reaction would you see you, you still speak of aggression and maybe like you said uh, hyperactivity or maybe drowsiness uh, could you just highlight that once again for the benefit of our listeners the kind of uh, reaction parents might see in children and then uh, obviously they have to take note because if they don't the child will be left to his or uh, her own uh, devices and then it might be too late and then it will impact on the relationship. Exactly. That's a very good uh, question as well. Uh, what they need to do is like uh, one, 
if your child has certain behavioral changes, may it be aggression, may it be quite lethargic and apathy, sort of just lying low, not answering, just giving you quick yes or no answers and avoiding your gaze and avoiding answering you as well. Not that usual chit-chatty child whom you had, but very, very uh, reluctant and sort of a different character if you could see him then you need to be suspicious other thing is the redness in eyes and sometimes like uh, being sleepy and at times we tend to see some kids keeping their rooms closed locked where the parents couldn't access whenever you ask them they tell you okay i'm studying don't disturb me but i don't think that would be, shouldn't be encouraged from the very beginning your the parents should have the access should have the uh, ability to be uh, in and around your child whenever they wish us of course with their with with their permission you could ask for their permission should i come in but it should not be left locked so minor things small things but that might make the world of difference then they'll know that I won't be able to hide certain things from my parents and they will avoid them straight out. And the other thing is sometimes these ki children will have that uh, different, uh, I mean, suddenly they will out of blues, they will like different music, different, different uh, themes, different uh, groups. Uh, that also, I'm not saying that that was always a bad thing or so, but you need to be a bit vigilant because certain substances will need certain rock music. Suddenly, a very uh, young, good child, a child who was listening to classical music all this time, suddenly come out with a big rock music and uh, thundering uh, uh, sounds in and around might be having certain difficulties with certain substance. I'm not trying to say that you need to make sure that always that if that happens that was a substance and you go and uh, beat your child to ask whether they are using substance don't do that but be vigilant in and around. Uh, will it impact on uh, their diet? Yes other important thing is like their diet also gets sort of some will eat at sort of certain times uh, sort of binges sudden very big amount of uh, sweets commonly sweets and sort of uh, high carb diets when they use certain substances like kg ganja and all that and uh, then again afterwards they might ignore certain food and sometimes when they don't have any substances they might have a loss of appetite feel lethargic and they don't crave food, food anyway so it's it's a bit difficult but always there is a change noticeable change in their dietary habits when they use substance how do they uh, react to uh, to uh other people with the in society if if they are drug abusers how does it how do they react to say they are at a at a function they are at a meeting any any anywhere anywhere they go it can be any sort of event uh, and they were talking about relationships here and it's the negative impact uh, it, would it be the same kind of uh, uh, maybe lethargy or the aggression or whatever it is the hype hyperactivity uh, in in a given situation Yes, with all that, they might have a bit of irritability, a bit of restlessness, because they, they wanted to continuously have that substance inside your body, in your bloodstream. So they might feel a bit restless at times when they don't have it. So one other thing is the earlier jovial uh, personality of that particular person will be a little... Uh, different sort of very harsh on certain topics harsh on certain people so their social skills also deteriorates with time they don't have that empathy 
related to the other people. They might try to manipulate certain people as well, even to lend them money or get them to invest on certain things, fishy scams, so they could earn money, quick money, quick buck. So that kind of relationship change will happen where you might not trust that person anymore. Doctor, finally, how do we to strike a positive note, assuming we have an abuser and obviously it's impacted on his or her relationship with family and society? How can, uh, what advice would you give to get that person out of it, gradually of course? Yes, one, anyway we need to get him out of this substance, so he needs help. He might not ask for it, but we need to offer him help. So the family should be there with him, not to leave him apart, to get it sorted out by himself, because he might not be. So one, we need to support them. And at the same time, we should not try to give them unnecessary opportunities, money or any other, even to make sure that certain valuables should be kept under lock and key. And so it's not easily accessible because Whenever he gets the urge, he might try to sell those and ultimately we get frustrated over him and that cannot be done. And other thing is, there are available supportive people. Like There are certain rehabilitation centers, dangerous drug control bodies available. So we have doctors all throughout the island in the base hospitals upwards. You have psychiatric uh, or mental health clinics where there is a substance use clinic. So they could walk in, they could take them with them, or else even they could go to the clinic and ask for the help. Just one, a rider to that question. Are there any, medic any, any medication that can be given to get them out of it, to, get, to clear the system? There are certain medications, but uh, not completely the main potent ones, but all these difficulties which arises from the substance use can be relieved. So they need not to go for it continuously. Thank you, Doctor. There we end this very interesting discussion on drug abuse and its impact on relationships. To you, Dr. Buddhijaya Sekara, consultant psychiatrist, teaching hospital Kuliapitiya, we offer our sincere thanks for being with us on the program. Thank you, Doctor. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene Tadesha Priya, for technical assistance. I'm Fatima Razikada saying good night and looking forward to your company next Monday, same time on Views on Health.